Today I want to share with you one thing I did that had the biggest crossover and impact on all the many things that I did in the gym. We're talking more pull-ups, a higher bench press, and even a 125 pound increase on my deadlift. <laughs> What's up, superhumans? BT here. If you're new to this channel, I like to create content that's gonna help you move, feel, and perform better, both mentally and physically. And if you're into this, if that's your jam, please hit the subscribe button. Before we get into today's video, I just first wanna say I hope you're safe and healthy at home, and I hope this video can be a distraction from all the calamity around us. This is a gripper, and as the name implies, it's to improve your grip strength. Think about it, your hand is connected to the barbell, the dumbbell, the kettlebell, and if that connection is weak, you're already shortchanging your potential. So today I wanted to share with you what makes up a good strong grip, the components, and some of the exercises and equipment I use on a weekly basis. So before we get started on the equipment and the exercise, let's talk about grip and what it's comprised of. We've got several different types of grip and one is crushing grip. That's like this gripper, right? I put it in and I've got to squeeze it. That's crushing grip. There's also pinch grip. That's where we place things at the tips of our fingers. We use this thumb, our pinky or index finger and we squeeze really hard, pinch grip. And finally, I don't know the technical name for it, but it's like hanging grip. It's the very tips of your fingers. We use this a lot in jujitsu when we grip, right? It's this. So rock climbers use it. They call it crimping when they put their thumb over, but it's just that fingertip strength that we also need. We also have our wrist and that controls like hammering on and off, leveraging, and then also this rotational work. And then lastly is our forearm, right? We've got all of these muscles in here that help control those extensors. Now, just like any other muscle, if you do it too much, if you work grip too much, especially from this contraction standpoint, if all we do is contract the muscle, we're gonna probably get some elbow tendonitis um, and just some other pain, and that's no bueno. So one of the things you need to remember is to work on that extension. The average men's grip strength is 80 pounds. Now I said earlier in the video that my biggest increase on my deadlift, it went up 125 pounds, was from doing grip work. And at the time it was just a gripper. And I started off with 80, very average. And within, I wanna say a month or two, I was able to close a 200 pound gripper. And that equaled about 125 pounds that I could put on my deadlift. My legs were strong enough, but the barbell kept slipping out of my hands. Even with a switch grip, I just couldn't hold on to it. By improving my grip strength, my deadlift went up. And because my deadlift went up, so many other things went up. My overall speed, like in the sand when I was a volleyball player, I could definitely jump higher because of it. Lots of good things increased when my grip strength went up. Here is some of my favorite equipment I use on a weekly basis. And I say some uh, because some of the items that I have are at my gym Excel. Because I'm practicing good social distancing, it's gonna remain there until this shit storm is over. The first item and probably the most common is the gripper. Now there are a ton of different grippers. There's actually different sizes. I got like mini grippers and these are good for that pinch grip stuff, right? Working that thumb. And then you've got your normal grippers, but each one of these have a different resistance. The text right there, right? So this gives you the resistance. 150, 250, 300, never close that one. And they go down to, I think, like 60 pounds or 80 pounds. So again, crushing grip, grippers. All right, the next thing that I like to use are little attachments that you can hook up to a barbell or dumbbell, sometimes kettlebells. And there are these little guys like these, these little accessories. And essentially what they do is they make the barbell or the dumbbell, the accessory thicker, right? The thicker that bar gets, the harder it is to grip. So they come in different sizes. This is a very thin fat grip. 
This is a very thick fat grip. This is like two inches, I think, and there's one even bigger than this. Good stuff right here. I use a couple of different like rock climbing attachments. These are great for like a carabiner, uh, or you can put some nylon webbing through there and feed them through a pull-up bar or something like that. But you can get these in different shapes like cones and stuff. And so you're hanging on this. This this gets really difficult and it's made of wood. So there's no, there's no texture here, it's very slippery. Along with those fat grips, there are different shapes. And this is the grenade grip. It's actually it looks like a little grenade. You want some gnarly fatigue, do some kettlebell farmer's walks with these attached. And don't worry, if you don't have any of those, if you don't have the means to get any of those right now, totally understandable. This, just a simple dish towel, uh, can destroy your grip. And I'm gonna show you a couple of cool ways to use this. So we're gonna first start with the gripper. This is probably the easiest because, I mean, it has like one function, that's to close it, right? Be creative when you get a gripper. Um, here are just some of the exercises that I like to do. I'll essentially do a farmer's walk. Maybe on the way back, I'll extend my arm overhead. Lastly, sometimes I'll go through windmill positions while static hold, and you'll feel the difference on this. All right, so now let's go over fat grips and how to use them. Probably the most common way to attach these and use them are for various ways of carrying or lifting. So on this first one, it's an exercise I mentioned earlier, and I do a ton of these, and these are farmer's walks with different grips. So you can use the thin grip, you can use the extra fat grip, you can use the grenade grips, you can even use the towel on these. The next thing I like to do is deadlift. So I'll put some grips on these and I like to vary the position of the grip. So I'll go through a conventional deadlift and I'll even do a sumo deadlift. I think it's also important to switch positions. So like if you're using a switch grip compared to a conventional double overhand grip. Lastly, these things are killer for pull-ups. Sometimes I'll set up multiple grips along the bar and do a few pull-ups of each one at different widths. Now, as I said earlier, you do not have to have some, some of these items to get a great grip workout in. You can use that dish rag. Obviously, you can't replace a gripper with the dish rag, but any of the fat grip stuff that I showed you, you can do with the dish rag. You can put it inside the kettlebell handle and do some farmer's walks with it. You can wrap it around a barbell and do deadlifts with it, and I love that variation. If you really wanna get froggy, you can put it over a pull-up bar and do pull-ups with it. It's one of the hardest variations you can do. And if you can't do pull-ups, then do an inverted row with those. Today, I just simply scratched the surface of what can be done with gr uh, your grip work. There are so many pieces of equipment and applications I didn't even go over. Things like wrist rollers, where you're like rolling. There's either the T-bar rollers, where you roll up a plate weight, or the wrist roll rollers where they're two like giant hockey pucks that you roll. There are different like sizes of pinch blocks, like four inch pinch block, two inch, uh, a, a pure plate, like a really thin plate. There are hang boards for rock climbing. I actually have one of those and it's awesome. Why don't we do a giveaway? Just a spontaneous, just thinking here, I'm gonna give away a pair of fat grips, a pair of the grenade grips, because those are some of my favorite. Entering my contests are really easy. All you gotta do is like the video, comment down below and make sure you're a subscriber. Needless to say, there is a massive rabbit hole that you can go down when you're trying to improve your grip strength. And I will put some of my favorite resources for that in the description below. There you have it, I hope you enjoyed the video and I promise you, you improve your grip strength, everything's gonna improve. I think they actually said it was the number one correlating factor to life expectancy was grip strength, actually. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, please hit the like button. It goes a long way in letting me know what kind of content you wanna see more of. If you love the video, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow, and with more channel growth comes better and better content for you. Finally, if you'd like to be notified of when I release new videos like this, you can just hit the uh, notification bell down below and you'll get a notification on when new drops. Again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home if you can. I will catch you on the next one. Peace. All right, I don't know if I'm going to use this Rode wireless mic anymore because it does this. Maybe I just need to get a laugh for it. 
either way, uh, I tried something different today and I hope it pans out. If not, I guess you'll see it on the outtakes or me apologizing for it. Well, there you have it. I hope. Well, there you have it. I hope you. I'm not gonna use this thing again. Stop texting me. Holy crap. That sucks.